are coming up with a really great season. Have you ever gotten just a chance to like maybe sit, sit down, maybe just think about what you want to do this season as your time is stuck coming in? Yeah, it's super cool to think about um, just how long I've been here um, and just how many new faces I've been able to play with, how many different teams I've been able to play with. Um, so it's just it's exciting to sit back and think of kind of what's happened, but also look forward um, and just be super excited for this season. We've got an awesome group, a uh, new group, and uh, it's just really cool to um, be in a leadership position to where I can um, try to make the best impact I can um, on these young ones and then ones who are going to step into a leadership role next year when I'm gone. So um, there's so many opportunities just for, you know, a last impact on the field, off the field. And uh, I'm just excited to kind of finish strong with this group um, because this is, you know, one of the most talented groups I've been a part of. So uh, it's a great group to finish off with. How much has this place changed from when, sh when you showed up to, to now? Yeah, I think uh, just the style um, and just how coach runs things has stayed the same. Um, it's been the same kind of expectations, but just as you get older, um, you kind of have a different perspective uh, because you step into different roles and you um, grow as a player and a person. So um, I know that, you know, it always gets tougher because there's more um, just expectations as you get older and you do take on leadership roles. So that's kind of changed a little bit, but uh, ultimately just the expectations from coach for the team has been the same. Um, and I think that's uh, kind of shown in how consistent we've been as a program um, throughout my career here. Chris, I think you've, I think you've known Elena Flores for a minute, being from the Phoenix area. Yeah. What, what can you tell us about her and what, what do you expect to see out of her? Yeah, we've actually been rivals growing up. She was on the Suncats, I was on the Firecrackers. So uh, we've had some awesome kind of interactions growing up uh, playing in Arizona. So I never officially played on her team until now. Um, so it's really exciting to do that. And just to know her as a player growing up, I know she's feisty, she's competitive um, and gets after and that's the kind of teammate that I want. So I'm excited to play with her in whatever role she steps in. Um, it's just a very competitive team. So people are going to find their spots how they may and um, it's going to be cool because we're very versatile. I, I suspect she's one of the options probably will play next year at third. Um, you know, there'll be new third, new first baseman. What's your role? What, and do you and TRA have any sort of different responsibility being that you, you are, you are going to have newbies at the corners? Yeah, for sure. I think um, it's been cool to kind of grow with TRA and kind of learn each other as we go. Um, I mean, middle infielders are one of your most important leaders on the field just because you're relaying things to the outfield um, and you want to be able to be behind your pitcher. So we've definitely just been able to kind of, you know, bounce things off each other on how we want the infield to be run. And, uh, you know, the newcomers are stepping in, uh, whether they are on the team and, and finding a new position or uh, their, their transfers. Everyone's kind of on the same page. Of, we just want to blend together and uh, be on the same page um, in how we kind of run the infield. So it, it, it's meshing very well. How are you feeling physically now? I guess shoulder that you were, had some uh, uh, surgery to clean up? Yeah. Just, what's that process been like coming back? No, it's been great. Um, I know that I took a little bit of time off uh, just to kind of get that figured out. And um, it's been cool the last couple of weeks. You know, rehab is kind of slowing down to where now I can pick up and get back to normal. Um, I've been able to throw 100% now, and I think it's really cool just to jump back in there like I, like I wasn't uh, gone. So um, I did miss those fall games, and I was a bummer just to not, you know, be able to compete against my own team. But it's been cool because, you know, I'm back and um, I'm excited. I feel healthy. I feel strong, um, even stronger than before. So it's going to be cool to finish this out. Uh, obviously, you had uh, a big fall there with what happened uh, late November. What's that, what's that been like? Man, since then. yeah, no, it's exciting. Uh, if anyone doesn't know, I got engaged, uh, and it's really cool because um, just, you know, our stories – um, just kind of took off, and um, it's really cool what we stand for and that we can, you know, make that <clears throat> faith-based impact around the country and uh, just stand for something different. So it's been cool to just continue to have that impact um, on his YouTube channel, things like that. But it's exciting to prepare for a wedding and, uh, you know, what's next. So um, it's just been a really cool process, specifically with, you know, OU fan base being around it, everyone supporting us. I love it, and I wouldn't want anything uh, different. Decision to have that procedure on your shoulder. You didn't have it in the off season. You came back. I, I, was there sort of a moment when you realized, eh, I think I need to do this? And was there any concern about 
timing and bleeding over into the finish of the season? <clears throat> yeah, um, I I was praying about it. Um, I I was just trusting the Lord that um, whatever decision I was going to make was going to be the best for the team and for myself. So um, I kind of did my research, talked to you know the professionals, and made sure that I was going to be back and ready. Um, you know, if the Lord wanted that, and thankfully I'm back and healthy. So um, it worked out great, and I think I definitely had to think about it and make sure I was prepared, but. Um, I would have made the decision that's best for the team, and that's what happened. Was the other alternative just to play through whatever pain you were in before? Is that kind of what you were balancing? Like, do, do nothing, just rest, and see what happens? Yeah, that was, I think, you know, coming into my last season, I had to kind of think about the pros and cons of um, what was going on. And, um, you know, it wasn't anything crazy that kind of was a season-ending an injury at all. So it's just a little, uh, just a little uh, tune-up, I guess, just to make sure that I was um, strong and ready and kind of comfortable for season. And um, yeah, it wasn't it wasn't too long of a of a recovery process that would have kept me uh, without making that decision. Grace, your offensive game here has really transformed. And, you know, you talked about early when we interviewed you and talked to you. You had a baseball and you played a lot of baseball. We're, talk about because you've become one of the best hitters in the game. So talk about that transformation. Yeah, it's very different game. Um, it's been really cool and interesting to just we study baseball hitters here even, and it's a it's a similar game, but also um, we look at the kind of mathematics behind it, and we have such little decision making time um, with how fast you know pitchers throw. So you know. I made that transition early enough to where I didn't need to relearn it as I got into college and when the game got faster. But um, it's just cool to see how it translates to baseball, but also how it's different. And we kind of have to shorten things up and make sure that uh, we're being concise and uh, as little movement as possible to have the best result. The power has shown up for you, though, in the last couple of years. You know, you know, you, they even hit you in the four-hole last year. Talk about that development and how that came together for you. Yeah, I think, uh, you know, Hitting, one thing about hitting is, you know, the mechanics and, you know, learning your swing, but another part is the mental side. And uh, JT has done such a great job of teaching us so many little details that go into hitting, um, and that's your mindset, how you approach your at-bats, uh, knowing, you know, what the pitcher's got coming at you. So all of those have nothing to do with your actual swing, um, so you want to do a lot of preparation beforehand. So, you know, I've, I've watched more film <clears throat> as the years went on, and I was just able to learn more about how to go into an at-bat to lead myself to, you know, the best chance of success. So um, a lot of work kind of outside of the, outside of the field um, to prepare for that and just to, you know, allow my game to grow offensively. Great. You, you talked about watching your teammates grow into leaders. Where have you seen that the most with Jada? Yeah, Jada, uh, she's a junior now. So she's had two years under her belt. And, uh, <clears throat> you know, she came in so athletic. And everyone knew um, she was just, you know, an amazing athlete, a shortstop. Uh, and, and I know Coach loves shortstops just because she can turn them into whatever position she wants and um, kind of let them and, and let them grow in wherever she sees that they need to play. Um, but she's definitely grown – um, as a player, but also just as a woman and uh, just kind of learning her role, learning how to interact with people and um, be a leader with her outfielders um, and being able to just bring energy and, uh, you know, stay enthusiastic maybe when, you know, she doesn't feel like it. So I think um, she's grown in so many different ways that uh, when I'm gone, I'm excited for her to continue learning and growing, but continue to have that impact on young players that have that same energy as her, but need to learn how to kind of funnel it into the game. So she'll definitely have that big impact on those types of players who have a lot of passion. Grace, it's been decades since the team's won three straight national championships. I know Patty doesn't want to dwell on that, but how do you guard against the added pressure as a team doing something that hasn't been done in years? Right. I mean, like I said at the beginning, it's a new year, a new team. Um, you kind of have to re, uh, refocus and kind of forget about what was behind. Um, that's kind of my mentality in life. And I know Coach um, definitely, you know, translates that to our team and how she coaches because you can't think about anything that you did in the past, whether it's a play that you just made an error on or uh, 0 for 3 game you had last night. You can't, you can't dwell on that. You can't think about what happened before because it's a completely new situation. Um, we've got so many new players and new positions, and um, I think our goal is just to go out and, uh, you know, to win games, do the best we can, hit the ball hard, uh, and see what happens. But 
uh, definitely having championships under our belt um, is an advantage because you know we're confident, we know that we're talented, but um, that's not our ultimate goal um, to go win another. Um, I know you know in the back of our minds it is, but ultimately we want to we want to be the best that we can be, the best team that maybe OU has ever had, um, and I think that's kind of our main mentality going into the season. Hey, Grace. You mentioned, uh, no, you mentioned uh, preparing for a wedding. I want to ask you about a team like Grace Green who went through that this summer and someone who's back this year. Just you talk a little bit about what Grace means to this team, especially as an older player who's been here for quite some time. Yeah, she was my roommate freshman year. So about, I guess, four years ago, uh, we came into this program together. Uh, we're the only super seniors left that came in that 2018 year. So it's been cool to kind of grow with her and um, to learn from her. I know she had an amazing freshman year and then just kind of we had a, a lot of talent come in and um, just things happen. And she's been able to really be one of the best teammates I've ever played with. Um, owning her role, owning her position is just, you know, a, a comforter on the team, someone who everyone can go to and knows that she's got their back. She's going to encourage them. She's going to, you know, get loud in the dugout and know when the runners are going. And that's an important role that every team needs. Um, and she's doing a great job of just rallying people who are in those roles. And uh, she's got a big bat. Can't forget about that. So if we uh, need that uh, bat in the lineup, whenever it comes, she's ready. Um, and she's getting better. And um, she's never taken that out of the equation. So she's ready when we need her. Um, and she'll always be that awesome teammate. Hey, what's impressed you about Sydney Sanders? Sid is uh, one of the coolest people I've met. Um, her personality is just so um, invested, um, but she always wants to get better. She's always open to you know help uh, in any way that anyone can give it to her. As a first baseman, um, people can think it's an easy position, but it's really not uh, because you're having to do relays and bunts and all this coverage stuff. So anytime that anyone gives her you know some tips or anything, she's open to it. She loves the help, um, and that's what makes her a really cool player. We know her bat uh, from ASU. It's, uh, you know, she hits bombs. So uh, we're excited for that, but also defensively, um, wherever she fits in, she's going to have an impact just by being so coachable um, and being um, someone that anyone can really uh, help with and, and get help from. So uh, she's really cool. Grace, uh, you talked about how you think the program's changed from when you got here to now. How much do you feel like you've changed from since you got here to, to now, not just on the field, but maybe personally as well? Mm, yeah, I've uh, I've definitely matured, and, you know, I, I thought I came into college, you know, spiritually mature, but I've grown so much, and God has used me in so many incredible ways just with, uh, you know, meeting my future husband, but also having the impact on my team um, and just, you know, reminding people their identity is not in the sport and that there's so much more than softball. And that's kind of been something that I've grown in um, and learning how to go impact others and people who come and watch. How, how can we be that light to fan bases and little girls watching and um, how can we inspire them? So I've definitely learned how to do that. And it's been so cool just to have that opportunity. I mean, you're only at the D1 level for four and I got a bonus five years so I really embrace that and as I'm now at my last year I really want to leave that legacy um and make sure that that's that's how I'm known when I leave how does how does Patty cultivate the I mean the, you guys are successful but you were talking about not focusing on winning winning a championship she was in here saying we're not focused on winning how does she cultivate that on the team because the pressure that seemed to be over you guys last year could have been crushing, but it wasn't. How does mm -hmm. she cultivate that? Um, it honestly comes in practice. Uh, we treat practice like we need to get better um, every second, every at bat. Um, and I think our competition starts there. We face the best pitchers in the nation, and we're competing against the best hitters. So um, when we're focused on you know the process and how we can work at practice, it really takes that focus off of championships because – we're trying to win the day, and uh, that kind of allows our focus to just be on how we can be get better as a team. Um, and then I'm so excited to start playing because then we can start beating other teams and, and having that competition. But um, we don't think about rankings. We don't think about um, just what other people are saying. So we really try to keep our circle small um, and just allow just the inside voices to have that impact. I think she said at one point last year that you guys had little things that you were trying to get better on in practice that you guys were – realizing we're cheering this and not necessarily win. Do you remember anything in specific, like a time that, you know, the team really got hyped about something that was really small 
but that you guys were so focused on getting better at? Yeah, I know um, as an offense, JT really preaches just the, the idea of an offense and not just hitting. Um, so in offense, you know, you have bunts, you have walks, you have hit by pitches, you have sacrifice, um, anything. And I think those are things that we really had to bring energy and practice to celebrate because in the game, you know, you want to celebrate those small victories when you get a walk um, and then walks turn into runs. So we definitely had to focus on that in practice uh, because, you know, you could get you could get bored at practice. If you're not celebrating those things and you're just getting through the day. But uh, making sure we're intentional about what we're celebrating as a team was huge. Thanks, Chris. Thanks, Chris. Thank you. Thanks, everybody.